Welcome to another video in the Resolve introductory video series. My name is Brent Hunter, and today we're going to take a look at runbooks in the Resolve Actions Pro automation platform. Now, our definition of a runbook may be slightly different to what you're used to with other automation platforms, because a Resolve Actions Pro runbook can contain the automated workflow that we call an automation, as well as an optional front-end page that acts as the presentation layer to your automation. A runbook can be just an automation, or it can be just a page, like a knowledge base article. Or it can be both, a knowledge base article blended with automation capabilities. Let me explain. Within this example runbook on the screen, notice that a page has also been defined. A page is the presentation layer and allows you to publish and deliver your automations to other people within your organization so that they can use your automation and input any required data such as a host name or operating system type, etc. Then they can watch the results of the automation in real time. You can further customize which results or the relevant action tasks in your automation are presented back here to keep it real simple for the viewer. The third part of the runbook is the decision tree, and you can find more information about that and how to join up multiple runbooks into an interactive troubleshooting guide that we also call a guided procedure in another video titled Introduction to Decision Trees and Guided Procedures. In this video, I'll introduce you to several features and their capabilities, such as the Automation Designer, a low code drag and drop interface to build your runbooks and automations, Page Builder, a web page designer to help build your front end presentation pages to your automations that enables anyone in your business to consume your automations and to shift left. And the form builder, a drag and drop tool to build input forms for when you require data to be entered or options to be selected by your users of your runbook and automations. Let's start with the automation designer. The designer is very easy to use with a familiar drag and drop interface. Along with the prepackaged action tasks, you can design your automations in this low code visual development view rather than coding in proprietary scripting languages. The end result are automations that are visually self-documenting so your IT leaders, teams, and other members can understand the implementation just by looking at them. To show what's possible, let's build a quick automation. To start, you drag in an action task from the left-hand panel, or you can simply drag down from the start element like this. Typically, you will now search your content repository for the action tasks you require, or you can build your own action tasks. Action tasks are reusable and take on the build once, use many times thing. The right panel shows the properties for the selected element or action task. Some action tasks will require input parameters and may also output data as well into output parameters. Finally, you can finish the flow by linking the action task to the end element. The action task box can be resized to suit. You can include text to help further document your automation and color formatting can help you distinguish different types of action tasks. You can also drag a group of action tasks together into a container, again, to make it much easier when viewing your automation. Now, if you wanna branch out or change the flow of your automation, there are a couple of different ways to do that. One of the outcomes of an action task is the condition which can be good or bad. So to handle a good or bad outcome, you can set the condition on the connector that connects the two action tasks together, as shown here. There are a lot more available elements, such as concurrent or parallel loops, conditional logic, events to pause and resume an automation, etc. To work with the data an action task has outputted, and to change the path or branch off from your main automation flow, then you can use the precondition element. The precondition wizard helps you build your required logic. For example, if the action task work log parameter contains the value error, then this precondition logic meets that criteria and the automation flow will go down this green or good path. If the logic doesn't match up, then it will go down the red or bad path. Additionally, instead of a good or bad binary condition, you can add lots more connectors and include specific text on the connectors themselves to control the preceding automation flow. So just to conclude, the Automation Designer is a very easy to use drag and drop interface 
to design your automations in a visual and self-documenting style. Let me now introduce you to the Page Builder, which is like a mini web page designer tool. Any of your automations can be triggered by an incoming event, such as a, a, an incoming email, a new incident or service request ticket, as well as from Resolve's REST API. But your automations can also be manually executed. And for this, ideally, you may want to create a front-end page using Resolve's Page Builder. Now you can add a wide variety of web components to start building up your front-end page. You can include headers and footers, page banners, images, graphs, charts, database tables, as well as a preview picture of your automation. Furthermore, you can also add other third-party plugins and libraries. An example of this is integrating with Google Maps and displaying the Google Map within Resolve's page. The other main components are the result component, which displays real-time results of your automation. And you can customize which specific results from the automation's action tasks will be displayed or not to the user. And the second one is the form component, which helps you build interactive web forms so your users can either select some of the options or provide additional data into your automation. Finally, as of most things with the Resolve Actions Pro platform, if you're an expert, you can get straight into the code of HTML and JavaScript, as well as Groovy Script, server-side scripting. Okay, now on to the form builder, which is actually one of the subcomponents of the page builder. This is really handy for the users of your automation so they can select from a variety of predefined options or to enter in data that will in turn be used in your automation. And there are plenty of field types ranging from plain old single line text and also rich text formatting to checkboxes, lists, radio buttons, drop downs, combo boxes, etc. The form builder also includes formatted field types like passwords, email addresses, IP addresses, phone numbers, and date and time fields. Forms can also be split into sections or wizard styles, which is where your user needs to first complete one set of fields before they can move on to the second set. For certain fields, like the dropdown field, you can also connect it to a database table to automatically pre-populate the available choices too. In this video, I've described what makes up a runbook in Resolve Actions Pro. You use the automation designer to create your automation or workflow. The page builder then enables you to create a front end presentation layer so you can publish and distribute your automations to anyone in your business. While as the form builder is used to get any required data from the user into your automation. Thank you for watching this introductory video to Runbooks and Resolve Actions Pro, the intelligent IT automation platform from Resolve.